Hi, welcome to GTS Distribution's Come and Play Day here in Seattle. My name is Rodney Smith from Watch It Played, and I'd like to invite you to join me as we take a look at one of the many games being featured here at this event. So let's go into the Watch It Played room and see what's on the table next. All right, well now I've been joined by Mike Selinker of Lone Shark Games. Yep. And you brought something pretty exciting with you. I think so. <laughs> What's this? Uh, so this is Paizo Publishing's new game uh, that, that I and my team designed. It's called the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. It's the Rise of the Rune Lords base set. It's our attempt to take all the communal feel and excitement and pressure of an RPG and put it into a 60 to 90 minute play session with... Uh, with no game master and no record keeping, but all the excitement, all the fun, all the permanence of characters. You can play a campaign forever. Um, your characters will grow, you're, you'll knock down scenarios. All the things that you want out of a, a role-playing game experience, but you can play it in bite-sized increments and play it when you don't have your RPG group over, all that kind right. of stuff. Yep. And how many people can, can play? Uh, you game. can play You can play up to six people. Yes. Um, that includes playing one person, uh, it's, it plays very well solo. We we usually call that grinding because <laughs> right. people yeah because people people who want to like make their characters better they'll play like five or six sessions in a row you yes. know between the hours of midnight and, and <laughs> seven a.m. so that they can when they come into the next session they're they're all powerful but uh, but yeah um, plays really great with uh, with like. Uh, Four players, five players, really good. It doesn't take any longer, depending on the number of players. Oh, the that's unique. Le the game yeah. length will be the same number of turns, regardless, give or take. Right. And so you get uh, the you get an experience where if you're playing with two people, it might be a very different experience than if you're playing with five, but it won't be a longer or more painful experience. Okay, right. And, and you talked about the gameplay taking about you said sixty to ninety minutes. Yeah, about Is that right? that. But you can also play this. Longer extended That's right. campaign. That's right. We've played, um, so we've been playing now for quite some time. Um, this is something that will be coming out over the course of a year, and we expect people will be playing it for that entire year. Okay. And their characters will be radically different uh, at, down the road than they will be when they start out. And they'll probably switch characters. They might, you know, characters die in this game. You okay. Might, you might uh, uh, suddenly be playing the ranger and then you know the next session you're playing the sorceress because you uh your character made a terrible decision along the way <laughs> and met a, a bad end yes <laughs> okay. this, this will happen sometimes it's not, not always permanent but it's it's every consequences matter in this game so, so what steers the campaign then since so there's no gm how is how is that happening the the game is a series of scenarios built into a series of adventures built into an adventure path okay and that's provided as content that's in absolutely the game, right? so so there's this grand sweeping arc story arc of rise of the Rune Lords, which is based on an uh, uh, adventure series that Paizo did for the Pathfinder role-playing game. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you go from your uh, first level green, green around the gills character, yes. right? Your, your character that uh, uh, has just got his first longsword and is really excited about it, all the way up <laughs> to your, your sort of equivalent of 20th level, you have the, the superpower sword of doom and, uh, and you know, our, our invincible armor and the, the wand of blow everything up, <laughs> right? right? And, but what you're facing along the way also starts to ramp up. Okay. Uh, the things you meet are much more difficult. The barriers that you have to overcome are more difficult. The scenarios themselves, the locations that you find start to get more difficult to deal with. And, um, and the challenges, each scenario is very different. The challenges might be totally different. In one, one scenario, you might be trying to find, a, a find and defeat a dragon. In another, you might be rescuing town folk from a flood. Okay. And so... Um, and all of that's represented in card text, like, you know, on little blocks this big, right? right? It's not like you have to read a big rule book, but you'll get the sense of this grand sweeping adventure. Your character is going to also change by the fact that you're going to take a lot of cards into your hand, but you're also going to have, into your deck, I should say. Yes. But the rules say that you have to get back down to where you started, essentially. Okay. And so you might get um, a plus three sword, but you might only have one weapon slot in your deck. And if you had a plus one sword before, well, that 
plus one swords going away. Sure, right. Because you want to keep the plus three. So <laughs> yes. your card, your deck changes over time, and you start to maybe tune toward specific effects that are on your card. You try to make card combos that work, and and use your cards that are called blessings to to get more turns and things like that. Okay. There's this timer in this deck that. Um, timer deck in the game that is this incredible pressure packed element that if it runs out you're done you lose so that yeah there's a definite end to the that's game that's right right, right? And the end so, of session you only have so much time to accomplish what it is you're trying to do right and so one of the things that characters do is that they try to just get better at dealing with time okay right they mm-hmm. they you start out kind of wishing that you had more control over what's going to happen in the game, and as the game goes on over over the course of several several play sessions, you're going to get that control. Yes. You're going to get things that allow you to deal with all the things they're throwing at you. The problem is those things are getting more and more tough to deal with. <laughs> right. right. Like the more control you get, the more control you need. So yeah, you weren't interested in giving people a cakewalk here. I don't think like, so. No. <laughs> no. Uh, there's there's been casualty counts that are very <laughs> high in this game. People make. And they always know why. That's the other great thing is that it, the game the game does mete out a fair amount of punishment, but mm-hmm. but you usually know the thing you did horribly wrong. Right. Okay. Right. Like yeah. you go, oh wow, I overextended myself. I I used my special power so much, and now uh, your your deck is actually also your health. That is, mm. you can do all sorts of things and use your cards to power all sorts of effects, but when you run out of cards, well, you die. Okay. So, and okay, so, yeah. so, you know, if you used all your skills and you, you did everything right and so forth, and then you suddenly find yourself drawing your last card. Right. You didn't manage your, your resources That's properly. Right. That's right. And so, so you usually know why you ended up in the bad state. Well, we've laid out some of the cards here for yep. the game, but this is a little bit deceptive because there's actually a lot more that comes. There is. Why don't you... Oh, I'd be happy to. <laughs> uh, so this is this is what comes in the base set. Right. Um, it's a so it's a this is a, a tray that we designed that holds cards upright. You can flip this box over, and the cards will stay Is exactly. That yeah. Um, and it's got slots for um, for more more cards. It comes with uh, uh, 500 basically 500 cards in the base set. Yeah. Right. Which is the base set sort of stock cards, the cards you need to play the game and the characters and so forth, sure. plus an adventure called Burnt Offerings, right, which is our sort of low-level goblin fighting adventure. Yes, okay. Right, and that's what comes uh, in your, your initial purchase, so that's, that's uh, 300 and um, uh, over 300 cards in the base set plus 110 cards in the, right. the okay. uh, Burnt Offerings. So what's all this space here for then? Well. <laughs> so, we didn't stop there. Uh, in addition, <laughs> in addition, we decided to make a character add-on deck, and the character add-on deck is a whole bunch more characters, right? So, if you get tired of playing the sorcerer or the the uh, fighter, well, you've got the monk and the barbarian and all okay. that other stuff. So that'll that'll slot in. That's another 110 cards. There's still a lot more space in there. Yeah, like, and then uh, yeah, and then we get uh, another adventure called the Skin Saw Murders. That's that comes out two months after the game comes out. And then still, get, there's still last. Yeah, and then there's then there's the Hook Mountain Massacre. Okay, and then we're getting closer. Yeah, and then there's <laughs> then there's the giant adventure, and then there's the Sins of the Saviors, and then there's the big epic finale, Spires of Zinchalas, and that is something on the order of twelve hundred. <laughs> And, and is, is this is where we get the whole campaign from. This that's is right. What, this is what this forms is, that campaign that's right. play. And all of this fits in the same box. You will never find the point at which, you know, you've been playing this for a while. Mm. Um, and in some games that expand, you're sitting there with like six boxes, yes, yes, right, yes, of there, stack yes, up, you yes. know, oh my gosh, let's play a card game. <laughs> and you can barely get through the door. No, right. it's all going to fit in one box. Turns out this box is rather heavy sure. at that point. Yes, but, but very functional. But very functional. And it's got all these wonderful slots of cards that, that will start to expand out. So it starts out with this many henchman cards, but eventually so it'll fill, fill that fill that, and everything okay. will fit tightly. Uh, and so over the course of the first year of the game, you will get all of these cards and you know, you'll start taking cards out of the game. Mm-hmm. You'll start saying, well, I'm not going to run into any more low-level goblins and things right. like that. So we'll put those to the side, make it more likely that we run into stone giants and 
Right, which Blue start coming out of the box and coming into the game. Play. Exactly, exactly. So it turns out to be, you know, a very significant uh, uh, object by the time it's done. Yes. But at the at the start, it's it's well, five hundred cards is still a lot. <laughs> it's still a lot. No, no, there's, no, there's a lot of content. <laughs> but there. but it I mean, it's a little more approachable at the sure. beginning, and then then it gets to be a full campaign. <laughs> And you've gone through thirty plus sessions of the game, and, right. and maybe more, maybe fifty. You know, you yeah. play as much as you want, and your character grows and grows, and you you beat down the scenarios, and finally you get to the end, and you beat the big bad guy, and you feel like you accomplished something, <laughs> yeah, something significant. Yeah. Well, we got a bit of a treat here because. Mike has set things up here to give a little demonstration of the gameplay, yep. and he's invited Chad along as well. So I'm actually going to duck out of here and give Chad some room to sit down, and let's let's see how this game works. Let's do sound, it. Sound good? Okay. Absolutely. Hey, this is Chad Brown. He's one of the four developers on this game. Uh, we also had Paul Peterson, Gabby Weidling, and Tannis O'Connor help us out. Really great team. Uh, we're going to show you how the game is played. Uh, we've set up two characters and an adventure for you. Um, the name of the adventure is Black Fang's Dungeon. Black Fang is a uh, dragon, very fearsome dragon. Indeed. Um, and why don't you tell us which characters that we have? Uh, I'm going to be playing Valorous the Fighter, one of the Pathfinder iconic characters. Mike will be playing Sione the Sorceress. Yep. Um, you can see that we have a couple of cards for our characters. Um, I have my, my uh, card here, Sioni, but I also have out there a representation card of myself, uh, and Chad does as well. So uh, we have two cards each for the characters. One is, one is the information we need to play the game. The other tells us where we are. And you can also use miniatures or the, um, the stand-up figures that they pawns. use, the pawns yeah. and so yeah. forth. Uh, so out here is the adventure. So a couple of things we have that go into that. Um, we have the adventure card, which tells us what adventure we're playing, and then the scenario card, which tells us something special about this scenario. So this one is what? Uh, this is Black Fang's Dungeon, uh, the lair of a, of a young red dragon, a young black dragon, I'm sorry, who's luring in some ancient ruins. Um, there is on the back of the card a description, both of the locations that make up this scenario. These are those. These are the four we're using now. Uh, if you got a closer look at this, you would see that there are uh, up to eight of these listed, and the number of players determines which ones you use. Yep. Uh, because more players gives you a little more resources, the later locations tend to be a little more difficult. They tend to complicate things a little more. And that's one of the ways we try to keep the balance from the number of two, uh, from two players up to, to six players being the same. I guess from one player up to six. Uh, in this case, we'll be playing with the Desecrated Vault, the Temple, the Shrine to Lamashtu, and the Throne Room. Yep. Uh, there's also uh, occasionally some special powers. In fact, I think they're on all the scenarios yep. now. Uh, so during this scenario, uh, when any character encounters an ancient skeleton henchman, and those are going to be special monsters that uh, we'll find in these locations, uh, each other character at that location must summon and encounter an ancient skeleton henchman as well. So they'll be undead everywhere. Yes. We have out here these locations. Each of them has their own deck. Right? Um, there are places that we're going to go. We also have a deck of cards each. So if you look at our characters, it tells us what our decks are made out of. The difference between characters is shown very starkly in what kinds of cards a character might have. My character, Sioni, has, uh, has a bunch of spells and a bunch of blessings and no weapons and no armor whatsoever. Right? Valoros is the exact opposite. Valoros yep. has uh, no spells, but he has tons of weapons and armor. He's bristling with, with ways to kill you. And so, mm -hmm. um, and so, and those will influence the kinds of cards that we have in our decks. And we also, on the other side of the card, have uh, our standard set of uh, ability scores. We have strength, dexterity, etc. Um, those are our skills. And then we have a set of powers. I'm good at a couple of different things, and Chad is good at a couple of different things. I'm good at casting blasts of magic and uh, and putting cycling cards that are spells. I'll never run out of spells because I'm always putting them back in my deck. Uh, Chad uh, Valoros's character, or Val the character Valoros has the ability to use weapons over and over again and to help other uh, people who are fighting at the same place he's fighting, right? So we're very different kinds of characters. We've got a whole bunch of different characters that we can use. So those are, those are our characters and they, those are our decks. So 
One, um, of, one of the things that I, I really like about this game that I'm really happy about and really proud of is that uh, the characters don't just have different powers and they don't just use different cards, but they have very different play styles. That's right. Uh, we noticed, you know, Mike mentioned that Sione uh, goes out and blasts things with magic, whereas Valoros uh, beats things with weapons. But Valoros actually helps people in generally more ways than Sione does. That's now, right. If Mike wanted to, Mike could focus on spells, on cards that he has to his deck that lets him help other people. But Valoros just by himself can go out and help people. That's right. And each of the characters we've designed plays very differently. So even once you've played through it a little bit, there are, are many opportunities to go through and have a very different experience. Yep. Our sorcerer is very different from our wizard, even though they're both casting spells that Indeed. blow stuff up. So um, what we do at the start of the game, very simple, is we draw to our hand size. My hand size is six. Chad's hand size is four. Yes. Which of us has a better situation? Well, that depends. See, the thing is, I have lots and lots of options. I have spells, I have, I have uh, blessings, I have items, I have all sorts of things. Uh, Chad basically has an armor and a weapon and yeah. some stuff like that. And some that. stuff, yeah. Uh, just a very small set of things. So Chad would seem to be at a disadvantage, except for one thing. Um, this is also our health. This is also the... Uh, if we run out of cards, I, if I run out of cards, I lose, right? Yes. I die. Well, he's not going to do that very quickly, but I'm going to draw lots of cards, and yes. I'm going to be perilously close to death um, during, during this game, I expect, whereas yes. Chad, the Valoros is probably not going to have that problem. So, um, so first thing we do is draw some cards. Uh, I've got 15 cards in my deck. I already have uh, six cards in my hand. That's a little scary. Yep. Now, we have another deck here called the Blessings deck. You want to describe what that does? Sure. The Blessings deck acts as a timer. It's a measure of the progress of the villain throughout the plot of the scenario. Uh, every time anybody takes a turn, we're going to flip over the, the top card of this Blessings deck, and it's going to influence the turn in subtle ways. Uh, the particular flavor of the Blessing will add to the flavor of the scenario. Uh, the special powers that it has will let us influence based on the cards that we have. Uh, but also, if we ever go to turn over one of these cards, if we run out of them and we can't, then we have lost the scenario. The That's villain right. has won and we have failed. That's right. And so we're constantly in a race against time that this thing... Oh, by the way, even though he said that, uh, that it is uh, every turn that you will lose one... There's also lots of other ways to lose oh, turns true, in this true, game, absolutely. right? There, you might fire off five or six cards off the top of this deck, and you go, where did our game go, true. right? So, so you have to be using your turns very wisely. Um, to start the game, we need to put ourselves somewhere. We've done that. So I'm over at the temple, and Valoros is at the Shrine to Lamashtu. Yes. So uh, let's take a turn. Why don't you take the first turn? Sure. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to talk about the Shrine of Lamashtu. Excellent. It's got a little description of the kinds of cards that are here. So I don't know exactly what's there, but I know what sort of cards are there. And the Shrine of Lamashtu has several monsters and several barriers. And these are cards that could hurt us, and they're things that we need to overcome. And not a lot of things that will help you. Right. No. Uh, Mike's starting out at the temple, which doesn't have any monsters I'm and smart. barriers. And, and can be very helpful. So he's looking for good cards, hoping to build up resources, whereas Valorous is just going to rush in and start cracking skulls. That's off in the way it turns so, out. Uh, I've actually flipped this card already, which I probably shouldn't have done, well, but that's fine. So I'll flip over this first card, and I'm going to start with a Blessing of Saren Ray. Uh, and then I'm going to turn over the first card and explore. I'm going to find a Blessing of Phrasma. Now, it turns out you can explore once per turn for free. Further explorations we'll show you in a second. Yes. I don't want to do that in a minute. Uh, so the particular Blessing of Phrasma... Uh, would allow me to uh, enhance a turn, and it is especially good at spells, which is not like, my sort of thing. I like spells. But it's very good for me to get this card, even if I, I didn't have any use for it whatsoever, because at the end of the scenario, Mike and I are going to rebuild our decks according to that deck list, and I can give this card to Mike. I really also, want during the game, if we want to, if it's really important, we can come to the same location and trade cards, yep. uh, but that's pretty costly, so we try to avoid that if we can. But right now, I'm going to try to acquire this thing. Unfortunately, Valoros is not the uh, best at this sort of thing. No, you don't In order to, to acquire that. it, I need to make an intelligence or arcane or divine roll of five. That's not your thing. It's not my thing. But I'm going to look and see. Uh, my best shot there is an intelligence of uh, d6. Yeah. He's got to get a five. A five or a six on this. You know d6. what? I really want that card. Right? And you'd say, well, what can I do? I'm all the way over here. Well, I have a card. I have a blessings card in my hand. And a blessing says... Uh, I can do a couple of things. I could discard it to explore my location. That's really handy. Or I could discard it to add a die to a check. And it turns out there's a check going on right now. So I'm going to discard this card and add another die 
to the roll Chad's going to make. Sure. So now I'm going to roll 2d6. Yep. And get hopefully it, not roll less than 5. Because if it, I do, it, Mike it. will be sad. Get it, get it, get it. Yay! See? And I got a 6. Turned out that was a really good idea. Yes. So he gets that, and he puts it right into yeah. his hand. And I can use this right away. It just stays there. Now, at the end of my turn, if I have more than my hand size, I'm going to have to discard down. And I'm currently above my hand size, so I'm going to want to use my cards. Uh, now, all the blessings can be used to explore your location. Uh, and because I don't think Mike's going to want this right away, I'm just going to play this card sure. to explore again. Excellent. So but, he gets another turn, sort yep. of. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing exploring again. It's still my turn. I'm not flipping over another card, but I'm going to see what I found next. Oh, uh, monster. Goblin dog. Yes. Goblin dog. Goblin dogs. Not so much fun. Uh, this particular card is from Burnt Offerings. You can see the one in the corner as opposed to the B for base tells us that. Yep. Uh, this is an animal. It is basic. And it has a power. If undefeated, succeeded a Constitution or Fortitude 8 check, or discard the top card of your deck. I don't want to so if, if I don't beat up the Goblin Dog, he has a chance to give me the Mage, which I really don't want. You don't want the Mage. But uh, that's okay. I'm not worried. I'm going to beat up this Goblin Dog. That's right. So, so it's a combat it, of 9. Yep. Check to defeat is combat 9. So I'm going to look in my hand and pull out the Longsword, which says, for your combat check, reveal this card, which means I just show it, and then I can put it back in to roll my strength or melee die plus 1d8. And this is important. All the cards tell you what they do. Yes. There's no point at which a card will require you to go running to the rule book to find out what it does. It just tells you, you can make a, you, for an attack, you can make a strength melee check. Exactly. So I'm gonna look at my uh, skill card, or sorry, the skill section of my character card of Valorous, see that my strength is d10. Uh, but since Valorous is good with weapons, I have a melee skill of plus three. So I'm already rolling d10 plus three. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add this d8. Uh, we'll use the blue for a particularly good reason. I like that color combination. So uh, the, the weapon card, the longsword, lets me add the d8. My strength gives me this d10 plus three. And I need a total of nine. All right. Uh, don't you, doesn't Valorous have a special power? Uh, Valorous does have a special power. That's correct. Uh, if I keep looking at the longsword card... You'll see that uh, you may additionally discard this card to add an additional 1d6 to the roll. Uh, Valorous is special power because he's very good with weapons. And whenever he would have to discard a weapon card for its power, he may recharge it instead. And to recharge a card, I just put it right on the bottom of my deck. No health loss whatsoever. So I don't have the resource right away, but I will get it, get it back eventually. Yep. And this is going to give me an additional die. So I'm going to roll all three of these. Now you've got to be able to get it. Ooh, and it turns out I really need them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ten. Uh, plus three, so you have a 13. Yes. That's plenty good. Bye-bye, Goblin Dog. So we defeat the Goblin Dog. That's right. Excellent. So we've made progress on, on discovering what's in this location. Uh, if I wanted to guess, I could look and say there were three monsters there. I've defeated one. Yep. So you start off with, with very light information, and you improve your information over time. Uh, so I'm going to gonna go ahead and press my luck. I'm going to play this standard barrier wait, 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 to explore wait. my location. No, don't. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Trust it me. It will not be What's fine. the worst that can happen? That. Oh, I can discover a skeleton horde. <laughs> That's about the worst that could happen. A skeleton horde is a barrier, so it's a challenge of various types. This particular one has a, a special power. Each character at an open location summons and encounters an ancient skeleton henchman. And you, then I'm going to banish this card. You did something that hurts me. So it turns out in this case, even though I'm over here exploring the Shrine of the Mashtu, skeletons rise up everywhere and attack. Great. So, so okay, we need an ancient skeleton card, so I'm pulling it from the box. Yep. Uh, this is the ancient skeleton. Uh, it is, uh, it's undead, so it's immune to all sorts of things I'm very good at. It's very good against uh, slashing and piercing weapons, which True. is the kind of thing you're good at. Right now, it's not just going to be Chad fighting it. It's going to be me and Chad fighting individual skeletons. Yes. Right? So I'll go first. Uh, I've got a, uh, a special power that allows me to discard a card, and I can roll my arcane die. So I'm going to discard my... Uh, blast stone. I'm going to discard that. And uh, I can roll my arcane die. My arcane die is actually pretty good. It's, it's my charisma die plus two. So that's a d12. See, I don't know why you were even worried. Uh, that's, um, I'll show you why. And, uh, and I also get to add fire and magic to this, which is good because skeletons are undead. And so I will roll to see if I can defeat my skeleton. I get a four. I add two, that's a six. I needed an eight. That's true. You should have rolled higher. You shouldn't have found the skeleton horn. That's probably true. So I unfortunately did not defeat my skeleton. And what that means is I take damage. And I must lose the difference between what I was trying to get, which is an eight, 
And what I got, which is a two plus four, is a six. So I take two points of damage. And that comes straight out of my hand. I must now discard two cards uh, to deal with the problem that I just hit. Now, thankfully, I'm not stupid. I came into this particular dungeon believing I was going to take damage. So I have an arcane armor card, which I can discard to reduce the damage dealt to me by two, so I only have to lose the one card. That's nice. Great. Now I'm down to three cards. Don't forget about recharging spells. Yes, I can actually roll this card. It says, succeed in an arcane four check, and I can recharge it instead of discarding it. So I'll roll, hopefully get what? my arcane... What? You don't have to roll. Oh, right. I'm Sioni. I've yep. got a special power. Yeah, I automatic. I was all ready to roll the die, and Chad reminded me. I automatically succeeded any check to recharge a spell, because I'm a sorcerer. I get these cards back. So, boom. I'm good, but... I didn't particularly want to do that. I would have preferred not to meet a skeleton at all. That's hey, reasonable. Why don't, you, that. why don't you fight all your right, skeleton? So I'm going to fight the skeleton. Uh, I also have to fight the same. I still need a, an 8. Yep. Uh, I don't have a weapon, as I mentioned, so I'm going to have to use my d10 plus 3. But I can't I, help you. I do have a blessing, a blessing of the gods, which says discard this card to add one die to a check. Uh, the die that you would normally roll. The die that I normally roll is a d10, so I'm going to add a second one. So now I'm rolling 2d10 and adding 3, so I'm feeling pretty confident now. Yes. And I do. So okay. I beat the crap out of skeletons. Because who could possibly lose a fight to an ancient skeleton? This is not what I want to hear right now. Yes. And then it tells me at the end of this card what to do with it. Because it summoned a bunch of cards and we had to fight. It just says banish this card. So the skeleton horde is gone. You're welcome. I've dealt with the skeleton horde. You're so, welcome. <laughs> so I think I'm not going to press my luck anymore. That'd be nice. One thing, I only have one card in my hand. So my turn's going to end. I'm going to draw up to my hand size. Now this is the point where I might run out of cards, and if I had run out of cards and had to draw cards and didn't have any, I'd be dead. So I don't want to do that. Now I'm starting my turn with three cards. I have a hand size of six. Somehow I'm missing some of my cards. So, I don't know what could happen. Yeah, so I'm going to go, I'm at the temple, right? Uh, first thing I need to do is flip a blessing, so we're losing time, right? There's some powers there about me moving there, but I didn't move there because I'm starting there. And I look at the first card, and I get, oh, look, a spell, mirror image. I like spells. So I'm going to roll to see if I can get that spell. I need an arcane roll of six. I have a d12 uh, plus two. That seems reasonably good chance. I get it, there so you I just put it right in my hand. I could use it right now if I wanted, except it's not terribly useful. Um, I don't have any ability to go again, so... I've reached the end of my turn. Uh, at the end of my turn, I need to draw back up to my hand size, getting closer to the bottom of my deck here. True. Right? So I've drawn some cards, and uh, I've completed my turn. All right. Uh, now, since that was a check Mike made, I could have helped him. Yep. If I'd had a card that would let me do it, but he didn't need the help, and I didn't have the ability to help him anyway. So on my turn, I'm going to stay at the uh, Shrine of the Washington. I'm going to flip over the uh, Blessing of Calistria. Yep. And then I'm going to explore this location. I'm going to find, hey, look, an ancient skeleton. Can like we mention the there were lots of undead? You can see up in the corner here, it says it's a henchman. Yeah. And on the scenario, it tells me that the villain of the scenario was Black Fang, but the henchman is ancient skeletons. So this means uh, I'm going to get to use this power at the bottom. If I defeat it, I may immediately just have to close this location. So I'm going to look at the location, and it's going to tell me how to close it. It's going to say, succeeded a divine six check. Not so good for which you. Which I'm not especially good at. Or banish a blessing. Do you have I one have, of those? I have a blessing in my hand. Excellent. I don't really want to give it up, but it's going to be worth it to succeed here. So Absolutely. For, first of all, I've got to beat up this ancient skeleton. I have a longsword now. Yeah. Longswords are not so great against this guy. Uh, because he's an ancient skeleton and this is a slashing weapon, he's actually going to be an 11 instead of an 8. But I'm going to use the weapon, so I think it's worth it. So I'm going to use my D10 strength again to add three to my really, melee skill. I really want you to beat this, so I'm oh, throwing... No, no, no. I'm going to throw this away. You're good. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to use Valorous's power again to add an extra D6 to the D8. Good. And uh, so I have to recharge this card, so it won't be available again until I draw to the bottom, but we'll, I'm still pretty confident. All right. So now I need a total of 11 on these three dice plus three. Good. And I do. Okay. So now you've got to discard, so, you've got to banish a blessing to yep. get rid of this. And I will choose to do so. So I take this blessing of Phrasma and I say goodbye to it. Wait, it's the blessing of Phrasma? Okay, fine. Sorry. <laughs> fine. I wanted that. It's true. Uh, first thing we do is we look through this deck and make sure that there's no villain hiding in nope. here. Now the villain hasn't fled yet, so we know it can't be doing it, but we, we do that step just to be sure. Later on, if the villain were to flee, he might have been hiding there next to the henchman. Now all these cards go away. Yep, those cards are all gone. And then I will check the bottom. When permanently closed, I may banish a blessing to draw a random blessing from the box. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any more cool. blessings, so that's fine. I turn the card upside down to mark that it's closed, and then my turn is done. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead a little bit so we can uh, see the end. So we're gonna declare this location closed and move over a little bit. That's right. At the beginning of my turn, I'll move over to the desecrated vault, which is a very scary place because all the undead I beat here come back and fight me later, and hopefully I won't run into any. So um, I'll take a look at the I'll take a look at the first card. Oh, it's potion of healing. Those are nice. Um, I need to make a uh, intelligence check. Um, you know, I don't really care about this. It'd be nice to get one. I'm just gonna roll a d6 and see what happens. Oh, I don't get it. Oh well, it gets banished to the box because I didn't get it. Sure. No big deal, because it really wasn't something I cared about, but I do want to keep going through here. Maybe we'll find something that I like. No, that's not something I like. Um, that's the villain. Okay, so the villain is the big bad in the scenario, and they have all sorts of special powers. But the really important thing is that I don't want to have anywhere else that he can go. This is a dragon, um, and it turns out that he can go anywhere there's a, char the, there's a deck but no character. Well, these have been closed, right? So uh, right now, Valoros uh, is guarding the temple, and I'm at the Desecrated Vault. So if I beat this guy, then we'll end the game successfully. So first thing that has to happen yeah. is that... Valeros has to try to temporarily close the temple. Right, so I'm at the temple, and I might be able to stop them from going there, but I might not. Uh, now, the reason Mike skipped over that is Mike knows that the temple is special. And in addition to not having bad cards and having mostly good cards, the temple closes automatically. I was pretty confident about right. this. So he's just going to say, the temple's fine. Close the Nothing doors, no, no dragons here. No dragons allowed. So, in my case, though, I have a much more serious problem. First off, he's combat 12, which is reasonably high for a low-level game. And before the counter, uh, each character at this location must succeed at a constitution or fortitude 7 check. I'm probably not going to make that. Or be dealt 1d4 minus 1 acid damage. All right, so I have a constitution check. I have a d6. You want some help? I got to get a 7 on a d6. Oh, you want 2d6? I think I'd like 2d6. All right, so I'll play a Blessing of the Gods. It okay. adds an extra die. Hey, I made it. Okay, I don't take any acid damage. That's nice. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to try to beat Black Fang. I gotta, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna load everything into this. I really want to make this work. So I'm gonna cast a force missile. Um, force missile says for your combat check, add, uh, discard this card to roll my arcane die plus two d four, with the combat, uh, with the uh, force trait, which is nice. Um, and I'm also going to throw a blessing on top of that to get another die, just to make sure we finally beat this guy. Right? Now hopefully I can get a 12 with this. And I get, ooh, boy, I get, I just made it. I got, I got a, a 15, um, I just made it. I beat Black Fang, he has nowhere to go. Thankfully, we've stopped Black Fang. We've won the game. Right. You uh, check to see. He can't flee here because these locations are closed. He can't flee here because I automatically closed the door. That's right. So we have won the scenario. Yay. So, so a couple of things. We finished the game. We, we get victory. Uh, the scenario tells us that we get a reward. Each character draws a, uh, picks a type of card and uh, draws one of that type from the box. Well, I want a blessing. What am I going to get? I randomly draw a blessing of Torag. So I would like a weapon, please. All right, you get a battle axe. Ooh, I like battle axes way more but, than I like short swords. That's right. So at the end of the game, the last thing we do is we look at our character deck list, right? And we have to get back down to these numbers of cards. Now, I picked up a few things along the way. So did Chad. So we're going to look at the cards we have, and we're going to, you know, stack them out like, yep. you know, like people do. And see, I didn't get any extra don't need these allies, yet. so I'm pretty sure I don't need any more of those. But, wait a minute. Um, I've got an extra uh, blessing, so I'm going to toss this blessing of the gods because I just picked one up. Now, the, one of the key things here is that Mike and I each need to get our decks down to the right numbers. That's but, right. But we don't have to use just this, my cards. I can also ask Mike to, for cards that I have. He can ask for cards that I. That's right. I got an extra. I got an extra uh, spell, um, mirror image. I like that better than arcane armor, so I'll toss that away. And now I'm back to the level that I was before, but my deck has gotten quite a bit better because I got two cards that are just better than I had before. Um, Chad, you got a, a weapon that yep. was better than. I got a battle axe better yep, than the that's short sword. Pretty good. For me. Yeah. So now we're a little more 
powerful and ready to go for our next adventure, which is undoubtedly going to be much, much worse. Yeah. Right? So that's basically how you play the Pathfinder adventure card game. Well, I'm back, and I realized the only thing that was missing from that was another character to help you guys out. You guys, True. I know you succeeded, but I feel like maybe I could have could have helped it happen a little quicker. You sure. might, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mike certainly would have appreciated a I, cleric I, there. I, I think so. I, I would have dead. loved to have had a cleric around. Or just another voice of reason to help uh, right. argue against some a of the rashness. The of... first voice of reason. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure people are curious when they're going to be able to get their hands on it as well. When's this going to be available? Uh, it'll be out at Gen Con, uh, which is the middle of August, and then getting to... Uh, Hobby source after that. Um, you know, we really hope that people uh, take a chance to look at it and, and see and see if it's the game they want to play. Well, this is a, a great sample and a chance for people to check it out. If they want to look for more information, where are they going to need to go for that? I think they want to go to Paizo.com because Paizo.com has pages about the game and the expansions that we have coming out and some great articles that. Chad has written and I've written and so forth. So uh, take a look at that and you'll probably find out everything you want to know. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, listen, thank you both for taking the time Absolutely. to show all of this to us. Yes. That was fantastic. And of course, thank you guys as well for watching. We'll see you later.